Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barak wa salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for MCC's new Muslim Ramadan Story Series. Uh, today, alhamdulillah, we have Sister Lizette with us. Assalamu alaikum, Lizette. Oh, alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for joining us today and being willing to share your story with us. Um, okay, let's get started. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity um, to talk with you guys all. Um, okay, so I have been... Muslim for it was seven years in February, and I've been a part of this community yeah, for like maybe six years. The first year I was a little isolated, um, and I live in the East Bay, and I have three kids, um, a six-year-old daughter, and then a 10 and 15-year-old sons. Um, I, what else? About myself i'm a latina convert so sure. my parents are um, um my mother's mexican my father's salvadoreño and as we know there's a big influx of latino converts so i think that's Michelle. awesome because uh definitely it's a beautiful thing to see and i'm hoping inshallah my family members join that influx of people inshallah i mean so, mashallah mashallah okay so let's take it back so you said you've been muslim for about six years right uh seven seven years okay mashallah so can you tell us about your first ramadan um, do you remember how you felt going into it and what do you remember most about that first ramadan okay alhamdulillah so my first ramadan um i actually um was pregnant with naima my daughter sure. so i remember um i took my shahada in february and at that time ramadan was around july because mm -hmm. um i remember she was a ramadan baby and I don't remember too much detail about it, but I do remember that um, a lot of it, I think just a lot of it, since it was so new, I honestly don't think I knew exactly what needed to be done during the first Ramadan. And also, you know, in addition to that, I was taking care of a newborn baby. So, so wow. the very first one, I think I was very disconnected, but not for um, like negative reasons, but more for like, you know, because um, things that kind of just naturally made me disconnect. I had a newborn baby. I was a new Muslim and um, I, I wasn't really, I didn't know a lot of people in the community. So the very first one, uh, I think was, yeah, I didn't really feel like Ramadan in a way. SubhanAllah. Okay. So then let's talk about your second one. Um, okay. How is it different? And do you, you know, did you, did you do anything in between your first Ramadan and second Ramadan that kind of like helped you, um, have a different experience or be more into it? Yeah, so, Ramadan. okay, great question. So the second Ramadan, in between that, I definitely did connect more, tried to connect with the community members. And um, um, in addition to me not remembering, um, because it's been so long ago, my memory is also not the best, you know, mommy brain. Yep. Um, <laughs> but I do remember the second Ramadan. I think that's the one that I first and then felt like some some moments of loneliness. And I think as converts, we've all, a lot of us, not all, but a lot of us have been through that moment of feeling disconnected because we knew. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we really don't um, know a lot of people. And so I remember, <laughs> remember one thing in specific. I remember I went to the masjid. I'm pretty sure it was my second Ramadan. I went to the masjid and then um, there was some sisters there and she said something, one of the sisters, she said something around, Oh, yeah, like I saw her last night at Iftar. And I was like, you guys get together for Iftar? So, <laughs> like, I was like, oh my God, people I shouldn't get together. So like this whole concept of like families, like celebrate, like break their fast together. You don't have to Sapa. be in your home alone. And I remember like that was so new to me. Um, so that's when I started trying to like, um, kind of like reach out. But I think one of the things that is really prevalent among new Muslims because I remember I felt it was like being shy to ask or finding a way to ask like, hey, can I go to your house for a tour, you know? Um, and so, and not only that, but I had three kids at the time who were young. And so it was hard. It was kind of weird to just think of myself going to someone else's house for iftar with three young kids, right? Um, especially uh, like a one-year-old name. It was like around one at that time. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
I remember it was more about like trying to find ways to connect and um, trying to find at the same time learning like, you know, what was Ramadan going to look like for me? Like, what are the special moments of Ramadan? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? Because remember, I just had a baby. So I was like focusing a lot on like her. And so as Ramadan got closer, the second time I was trying to focus on like, okay, well, what is Ramadan about? What do I have to do? Um, so I think the first two to three Ramadans were kind of around that. The third one was a little better, but it was more about like learning, like what I had to do and also being, you know, exposed to this idea of like, oh, like, you know, I can have iftar with other people. I don't have to be alone. But definitely that sense of loneliness was there that I've heard other converts um, kind of go through. You know? So Paula, that's such a good reminder for us, Lizette, for, you know, people to open their homes, if they know any new Muslims to open their homes to um, their friends, new Muslim friends, especially who don't have, uh, you know, convert, you know, family that they can spend iftar with um, or <clears throat> break the fast with, mashallah. I agree. And also like finding a way to invite them because like I, I remember specifically like not knowing first of all I wasn't going to go to someone and say hey can I come over you know um but then also like um I didn't know many people to ask at the moment like I remember um there was one sister who had a baby around the same time I did so I think I felt comfortable just with her you know and maybe a few other sisters but I didn't know a lot of people so I think one thing and I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one thing I wanted to kind of include in this part of it was to encourage um, Muslims in our community like to not wait for a new convert to say like hey can I come over because that's kind of weird you know but to say you know it's even just like casually ask like if we know they're a new convert um, or it's one of their first first Ramadans not just the first but to ask them like what are you doing for iftars what do your iftars look like like who are you hanging out with you know mm -hmm. and I think that's a good way to kind of get them to open up and, and possibly you know have an opportunity to invite them over. SubhanAllah, mashallah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move on then. Um, let's, I mean, even including those first three of Ramadans, uh, what would you say has been the biggest struggle or struggles that you've faced during Ramadan? Uh, in general, right? In general? Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, I think one main struggle for me has always been just Sahur because for many reasons, um, there's many parts play parts that that different aspects that play a part in it right like get, like um getting uh, used to getting up early in the morning and eating and having an appetite right yeah. um but then also i've definitely noticed now that my sons are fasting um that for the last two ramadan it's been easier for me to do suhoor because mm -hmm. I get up and I eat with them, right? And the water, as before, it was just me and it's harder. So that was always difficult for me. First of all, getting up early, then not having an appetite and then kind of forcing myself to eat. Mm -hmm. And um, and like suhoor, obviously, it's not like, uh, it's not a fun. It's not necessary that you have to do that before you fast, but it is something that is um, encouraged. It is sunnah. And so I think it's just nice to do it and it makes it a little easier to fast during the whole day. So um Having someone there to, to do suhoor with um, makes it easier. That's always been a struggle for me. And I remember once there was a sister who came over. We did a sleepover, her and her kids and me and my kids. And we did suhoor together. And that was one of the funnest suhoors we ever had. And it was one of the easiest ones because it literally felt like a party, like at mm. three in the morning. Yeah, so hard. <laughs> Getting up and doing it you know, together. So that's made that aspect of it easier. So that was one that's one struggle that comes to mind. I mean, I know there's probably others, but that's one that kind of is prevalent in my head. And I can imagine that's a common one for a lot of single converts who are living by themselves and subhanAllah are getting up by themselves for suhoor every day. And, you know, that's just such a huge struggle. We don't think of it as a struggle, but doing it by yourself is a, is a big one, subhanAllah. Yeah, I remember one brother, he um, mentioned how um, in a in a lecture, he was giving how he remember he he was giving a story of how he remembered he would get up when he was in his parents' house, wake up, and then grab like a cereal bar or an apple from the fridge because you know it was his parents' home, and then walking out, and that was a support, right? Um, and it's like when he said that, 
I could totally pull at the strings of my heart because I was like, oh my God, like I can connect with that, you know? Mm. And I'm pretty sure there were other Muslims who felt that. And so it's not just about not eating in the morning, but it's like the whole, you know, everything around it, like not having anyone there or even having to sneak in something to eat in the morning for Sahur because you're, 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 you know, you're the only convert or the only Muslim in your home. And so, but alhamdulillah, as the years go by, it gets easier, which is, I think it's like, you know, like it's, you, 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 what you don't know, you know, I heard this recently, like you don't know what daylight looks like unless you know the darkness. And so mm-hmm. like, you really Sapa. appreciate having someone to have suhoor with when you've been on the opposite side of that. You know? SubhanAllah, mashallah. Okay, so how about on the flip side? Can you tell us a special um, Ramadan moment or memory? Yeah, oh my God, so many. Um, let me see. I, let's see, sorry. I know I should have totally like, I don't know if I'm going to earlier. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think, Oh, I remember one. I remember one where um, we went to Ta'lif and they had uh, Kiyam. Mm-hmm. And um, that one was really special because um, Aisha Prime was there. So- and so it was beautiful because I think that was one of my first Kiyams. So- and so I didn't know exactly what to do. But it was like, um, you know, just her talk was amazing. Being around all these other sisters there was amazing. Um, staying up all night, you know, just making du'a to Allah was amazing. And then having that amazing food that Talif always has afterwards was amazing. And so it was a great experience. And that kind of opened up the path for me to do that with other people or even by myself, you know? Mm. And so that was a great experience. And I haven't done it with my kids, but I definitely want to have uh, a day when I do Kiyam with my kids there, you know? Mm. I, think my, I think my youngest might fall asleep, you know? But like my son, like, you know, and my middle son, he's really, mashallah, really into his dean right now, alhamdulillah. Mashallah. And so maybe doing it with him, I think would be really fun. But that night was really, really, really fun. Not only because, because it was like a combination of being in community and then um, being in a space that, you know, I consider like a, a very comfortable space and like, like, you know, a family's home, I guess you can say, you know, like it's a very, it's a very dear space to me. And then, um having that connection with Allah, with all those people around, and then top it off with good food at yes, three in the morning. It was, it was awesome. SubhanAllah, mashallah. And I want to mention that, that we're talking about Talif uh, in Fremont. Mashallah, it's a beautiful organization. May Allah um, reward Talif and, and grant them success in their mission. I mean. I mean. Okay, so... Okay, so this is um, an interesting one. So um, in the Project Lena book by Anse Tamara, um, she talks about, or she and Anse Najia talk about um, creating nostalgia for yourself and your family. You know, we grow, grew up with different religions, right? We weren't born Muslims. So um, growing up, we had different traditions and celebrations that, you know, when we think of you know, they pull at our heart strings in some way because there's nostalgia associated with them. So um, as new Muslims, we're able to create traditions for ourselves, new traditions. So I was wondering if you have um, started any new traditions for your family and also um, like what have you pulled into it? Like your Latina, you mentioned that you're Latina. Did you mention, did you um, pull in any like Latina foods or anything like that? into your traditions that you may have started for Ramadan? That's a great question, a fun question. So I know definitely one of the traditions we started that or is a tradition I think amongst a lot of Muslims is moon sighting. And mm-hmm. so we try to make it a fact to go um, every, every beginning of Ramadan to sight the moon. And um, this year was amazing. It was a lot of Muslims, you know, given COVID just with the last couple of years, so many people were ready to go moon sighting. Everybody was out in full force. Yes, it was so nice. I know, he, I know at, at the um, Lawrence Hall of Science and at MCC and at Mount Samuel Pius, there was a lot of families in all three places, which is amazing. Um, so that definitely is a tradition that we try to keep. And in addition to that, we always like try to remember to bring like bags of cookies or like the little glow in the dark lights because I think one of the first Ramadans where me and the kids went up to go moon sighting, I remember 
it got so dark. All you can see was kids running around with the little lights. Like little, somebody that gave out like little ring lights and it was so cute. Like that everywhere, is such a right? good idea, mashallah. It was amazing. Not only can you make sure they don't leave, you know, the premises, but, you know, see where they are. But just the fact that, you know, you see all these lights everywhere, you know, it was really nice. So we tried yeah. to always have go in the dark lights I and mean, then cookies or treats. So that's definitely part of that tradition. Um, and then we always decorate. I, I do like a big thing around decorations because um, I want the kids to um, see that Ramadan is very special for us, you know. So we go all out with decorations. I wish I could show you the decorations we have right now. Um, and then we also have a calendar. So we do a calendar and uh, we have two. We have one calendar that marks the Ramadan nights and one calendar where we put treats in there. Nice. And I haven't, I didn't get a chance to put that one up because that one's handmade and I, I didn't have time. Um, but in each envelope, I always put like a little treat, you know, That's like true. a chocolate for each kid. And so each night, and we usually switch off either um, right after Maghrib or right, um, yeah, either right after Maghrib or right when we, uh, when, after we eat dinner, um, after we have iftar, they get to get their candy out and then they move the little moon over to the next day. So Gosh. that's like a little tradition that we have set up. And for now, I think those are the main ones. I'm trying to implement other ones. We usually try to always have a Sephora night where we stay up late and we go meet with friends and we go have Sephora like at, you know, some restaurants or something mm. like Murchies or, mm -hmm. you know, if, 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 so, if we can't go that far, then Denny's or something. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I'm not promoting Denny's, I'm just you know, saying. <laughs> And, no um, and it's really fun. You know, it's a really fun night. Um, so those are some of the traditions and I'm definitely trying to create other ones. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Okay, so, okay. <clears throat> so a bit of a tangent. Mashallah, uh, I know that you recently were blessed with a chance to go to go for Umrah. So, and this was your first Umrah, mashallah. So um, can you just uh, share a little bit about your experience and then also tell us uh, how, if and how um, your Umrah experience has changed your Ramadan experience this year so far? And it's only been a few days, but, you know. Okay, um, inshallah. So yeah, alhamdulillah, um, Umrah was amazing. It was um, just so many different experiences that I can't even, you know, like say them all like it was it was amazing it was beyond what I expected and that's you know with the clause of I didn't know what to expect right mm -hmm. so it was like beyond whatever I would have expected yeah whatever I would have expected it was beyond that right it was amazing and I think um the group of people we went with did a played a big part of that mm -hmm. um it, it, I think we we definitely created a family there was like 44 people I think from all over the country and there was a few from the Bay Area and even the ones who went from the Bay Area, I didn't know them. I only knew one person, everyone else. I, I teed them around a few of them, but I didn't know them. And uh, I think the fact that we created that family circle was amazing. It just made the experience so much more better than, you know, I guess it, it be just me and by myself or something sure. or people, people, I, or people I didn't connect with. And I think that definitely was uh, a blessing from Allah. Um, and it, it definitely, um, it definitely, ha so even, it's so crazy because even though, you know, we came back end of December and it's only been a, be been a few months, I think with how hectic life is, I was already like reacclimated, reacclimated, acclimated to like, you know, the way that life is here, like hectic and crazy and busy and overwhelmed. Yeah. And so I quickly like kind of started losing that touch that a feeling of like, you know, the different lifestyle and being connected to Allah um, because of life here, you know, and I was trying my best to stay connected to it, but it was so hard. Um, and so with Ramadan here, I'm so glad that it's here because I, I think I can definitely go back to a lot of the memories from Umrah and, um, and I feel like I learned a lot from Umrah, from the teachers that were there Masha. that will help me, you know, kind of ground myself and be more focused on what I need to be focused on during Ramadan. And one of the things I think that's really special that, you know, one particular thing is that um, I have these dates, these Ajwa dates that um, Sister Zainab um, gave us. And these are dates that are from the farm 
for Salman al, -Far Salman al Farsi, um, you know, like when they had to buy off the farm in order to gain his freedom mm -hmm. from a slaveholder. And so uh, those dates are amazing. And so I'm usually not a date fan. And so this is the first Ramadan that I'm actually um, eating dates every Sahur. And Inshallah. it's actually made a big difference for many reasons. It actually helps hold the fast easier. Mm. And um, and I'm not forcing myself to do sunnah, which is have a date. Yeah. And um, and it just feels so, there's something special about like eating a date from a blessed farm so that came directly from, you know, from Mecca, not Mecca, I think in Medina, from Medina. And I'm just very grateful to Sister Zena for making that opportunity happen, for sending that up. And so Mashallah. I feel like I definitely, it's a big um, part of this Ramadan. And, and the kids too, like, uh, they don't like dates, but hmm. they love those. And my mom, my mom has been like, I have like three packs of dates from, you know, different people who gave me some. And she always goes for the Ajwa day. <laughs> oh, mashallah. So, you know, like, you know, she likes them as well. So it just, it's, it's just one of those special tokens in this Ramadan. And I'm hoping, inshallah, that, you know, years years later, I can look back and remember, uh, like, those Ajwa dates as, as a special part of this Ramadan, inshallah. Mashallah, inshallah. Okay, so we're down to our last question, Alhamdulillah. What advice would 2022 Lizette give to the Lizette of seven years ago when you were first experiencing, you know, oh. Ramadan or your first, you know, as you as a new convert, basically, what advice would you give that Lizette as you embark on Ramadan? And, you know, at that time you were you were pregnant. So maybe it's a different thing, <laughs> but um, just as a new Muslim, what would you give your so what advice okay. would you give yourself that's a great question um i would say to um i guess i, I would say to try to find a way to be in community because i think it definitely makes a difference you know um i would recommend um my advice would be for new muslim lizette to um, find ways to be with community to kind of to go to the masjid and connect with people so you know, won't be home alone, feeling lonely. Um, to also um, study Quran, because I know that, and it doesn't have to be Arabic, but more like, you know, to um, it could be the English translation, because I feel like that's a, a, a big part of Ramadan that I didn't really um, know, you know, was like a key part of Ramadan until years mm -hmm. later, you know? And, um, I think it definitely is a great opportunity to connect to the Quran and to gain a lot of wisdom, you know, and knowledge from it. So focusing on that. But I think key key would be like try to be in the community because you can get a lot of a lot of all of that within the community. You know, you see people reading Quran, you also might get invited to iftars. Or nowadays, you know, I don't know if they had it back then, they probably did, but I didn't know, you know, go to iftars at the masjid. Mm. Um, and so I would definitely say just be in community and that makes it a very, you know, it makes it very, it makes it easier, very special and it, it removes that loneliness. So that's like the, I guess the key advice I would give. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, that's beautiful advice, mashallah. Um, SubhanAllah, so many people took Shahada in the last couple of years and with the pandemic, it's just, I can't imagine how hard that was. And I'm sure there was a beauty and blessing that came with that and being in solitude, but SubhanAllah, definitely being in community is, you know, mm -hmm. makes such a big difference. I, I, I just actually, I'll share it with you guys just because, um, um, yeah, I don't think anyone from our community will, will, will know anyone from there, but like my, not like it'll make a difference, but I recently got news yesterday from my mom and I'm trying to verify this, that my, one of my cousins um, from, he's kind of, he's kind of like an adopted cousin. Hmm. His son um, is, is Muslim and his son is 15. He took Shahada. And so she said, she told me, you know, your auntie told me that so-and-so, you know, is Muslim. And I was like, are you serious? So I'm trying to get in contact with him. You know, I'm so excited. Like he Inshallah. grew up with my son. They used to play together all the time. My son is 15 as well. And I'm just like praying to Allah that, you know, it's, it's correct and it's valid. Only because in the Latino culture, Latino community, sometimes they'll um, confuse Islam with other religions, like anyone that, you know, in, ter in terms of like um, 
they might like somebody might be Hindu and because mm. they look Arab to them, they'll say, oh, they're Muslim, but they might be Hindu or something or they might be I another see. religion. Mm. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm hoping that he can, you know, that I it see, is valid because I'd have another family member mm. to be able to yeah. um, spend Ramadan with. So I'm really excited about that. That's a special uh, thing that just happened uh, inshallah. yesterday. And so inshallah, inshallah, that would be know. amazing. Inshallah, it's true. And I can inshallah bring him to the masjid. I really hope that I get in contact with him. So please make dua that Allah connects us because I don't know how to get in contact with him, but I hope I do. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay, Lizette, thank you so much. And Jazakallah khair for spending the time with us to share your story. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. And to everyone who was watching, thank you so much for watching and listening in on the our new Muslim Ramadan story series. And uh, may Allah make this Ramadan the best yet for all of you and all of us. Ameen. I mean, thank you so much, Sister Evelyn, for always spending you. time to do this and giving your time <laughs> and commitment. May Allah reward you and preserve you and allow you to do many more things like this for us in the community. I mean, and Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.